On July 26, 2019, the first season of The Boys premiered on Amazon, and the world was quickly hooked on the show. Now that season 2 has announced a premiere date, September 4th, I wanted to go back and revisit each of the first season's 8 episodes to better dig into what makes the show one of my personal favorite series that is still up and running today. Though binging 8 episodes in one sitting is a fairly small feat in today's binge-heavy viewing culture, the high saturation of choices across numerous streaming platforms makes it even more important to capture the audience's attention immediately, or else the creators will risk losing the audience that has all the freedom to click off and browse through a number of other options. The Boys does precisely that, in less than seven minutes of their opening episode. Right from the beginning, we are introduced to a world with a unique visual identity. The colors are desaturated, which gives it a more gritty feel, and the brief glimpses we get of the action from the superheroes are very very impressive given the fact that the show is working on a television budget as opposed to the blockbuster franchise budgets the audiences are used to seeing in the superhero films that have saturated the market. Queen Maeve's hairstyle and costume, including the headpiece, bears some resemblance to Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, and Homelander's aesthetic could be said to be the love child of Captain America and Superman. Though as we come to see over the course of the first episode and the season as a whole, he is far more twisted and subversive than the picture-perfect image of a hero that he projects to the unassuming public. These aesthetic similarities are worth noting because they are better able to resonate with an audience that has been bombarded by so many positive depictions of superheroes, as the show instead offers a more critical look at what happens when you place people on such high pedestals. The most powerful gut punch of the show's opening comes from Huey's story. Huey is introduced as a likable everyman. He works at a tech shop, he has a girlfriend he loves named Robin, they're making plans to move in together, and then… This is a brutal, jaw-dropping, graphic gut punch to both Huey and the audience. It's the genesis of his trauma, and though they don't outright state it, it is heavily implied that Huey is suffering from PTSD. Another character we meet is Annie, who goes by the superhero alias Starlight. One of the things I didn't appreciate as much until I went back and rewatched the series again and again is the way the first episode so neatly parallels the introductions of Huey and Annie. They eventually strike up a friendship and a romantic relationship, but these parallels in their story origins give them commonality despite the fact that they will come to work on opposing sides of a physical and philosophical battle. When Huey is offered a payoff by Vought on the condition that he signs an NDA, his father wants him to take it. Huey's father also tells him that he never had the fight in him. You can't do this. Why not, Dad? I have- You don't have the fight. You never have. When Annie is feeling down because she believes she messed up her audition to join the Seven, she decides to indulge in some comfort food, and her mother makes an offhanded comment discouraging this. Oh, Annie. I'm hungry. Of course, we eventually learn the true extent of how depraved Annie's show mother tendencies go, but even her incessant fixation on Annie becoming part of the Seven, and the creepy gloating she revels in being able to do towards her small town peers once Annie joins the Seven, is so severe that Annie doesn't feel safe enough to be able to tell her when she is assaulted by the Deep. Huey's emotional distance from his father further isolates him, making him even more vulnerable to get snatched up by Butcher and swept up into the boys. Also, on a side note, it's a nice little easter egg that Simon Pegg is playing Huey's dad because in the original comics, Huey was drawn specifically to resemble Simon Pegg. Of course, he's no longer the right age to be able to play Huey, but it's nice that they still decided to include him in the show. Also, Jack Quaid is absolutely brilliant at playing Huey. He completely nails the dramatic weight of Huey's trauma, but he can also do comedy, easily. Even when I went to re-watch this episode for the umpteenth time to take notes to make this review, when he said this line and made this face because he's mortified, I laughed out loud. It's a good job. Like, you're not selling kids smack. 
The Boys addresses different socio-political topics in its first episodes, many of which are either recurring or central throughout the entire season. There is the Me Too storyline between The Deep and Annie, where he coerces her through a combination of emphasizing the fact that she used to have a crush on him when she was younger, and then threatening her by claiming he has the power to take away her dream of being in the Seven. Whoa, 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 hey, wait, 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 wait. It's just a question of how bad you want to be in the Seven. When Madeline Stilwell is negotiating with the mayor of Baltimore about contracting a superhero to protect the city since the crime rate has become so high, this specific line stood out to me quite a bit. Nubian Prince fits your population's demo, but not too militant. Caucasians love him too. That is a line that indicates a very high understanding of nuances to racial tensions that a much larger audience is probably better able to understand now than when the show first came out. The larger issue that the show is presenting, and it's integral to the entire premise, is the corporatization of superheroes. The timing couldn't be more perfect for the show to come out and address this since the saturation of superhero content in entertainment media is at an all-time high. On the one hand, the show can offer a critique of the way people put these fictional heroes on pedestals, sometimes to an extreme and unhealthy extent, and on top of that, there are all these corporate figures in meetings talking about PR, merchandise, copyright infringement, demographics, and how to best capitalize on the emotional investment people have in these heroes. On the other hand, this is a principle that can apply to much broader issues than just fictional superhero characters in entertainment media. This commentary can apply to any type of public figure, leader, or corporation that is highly ethically dubious. Copyright infringement is costing Vought 1.2 billion per year. That's money out of our pockets. If we circle back around to Huey and Annie's parallel character introductions, I deeply appreciate how when they first meet, even if they don't fully know each other's stories, they're able to bond because they're at a similar place in their lives. They've both experienced massive trauma that has completely shifted their view of the world and the lives they had intended to live. Their dreams have been ripped away from them. Huey was making plans to move in with Robin and then she violently died right in front of him. Annie finally made it into the Seven and the member of the group that she looked up to and had a schoolgirl crush on when she was younger turned out to be a manipulative predator. They are both depicted as these sweet, well-meaning people that are in a great deal of pain, but in this first episode, they are already starting to fight back. Challenging your characters is important in a dramatic narrative, and both Huey and Annie have some darkness introduced to who they are. This is something that they have to continue to navigate throughout the season, and it all starts here. Is it revenge or justice to go after the Seven for what happened to Robin? Can you still be the hero you always wanted to be, even when you find out that the team you idolized is dominated by corporate figures pulling the strings? Things. Huey imagining himself yelling at and physically attacking the Vought attorney when he's being offered a payoff to keep quiet is a nice bit of foreshadowing of how Huey's trauma will take him down a much darker trajectory in the coming episodes. Additionally, when he overhears A-Train speaking with such an insensitive disregard for what he did to Robin is a good detail to establish a rift between the Seven and the boys, even if the boys have yet to fully form as a group. I ran so fast through this bitch that I swallowed one of her molars like a bug on the fucking freeway. Having an assault in your story is not something to take lightly or to flippantly throw in just because you want to shake things up. You can tell that the people who have created the story are aware of where the line is, because despite how graphic the show is about a number of other things, particularly in regards to action, they don't actually show Annie doing what the deep pushes her to do. The dialogue between them where he threatens her into doing what he does and her emotional turmoil in the aftermath is what's most important for the audience to see. And I'm thinking, so what? My daughter got into the seven. Anyway, so, so what did you want to tell me? The Boys has a very large ensemble of characters, and some of the ones that are first introduced in episode 1 do not have enough material to properly dig into in this video. In particular, Butcher and Homelander are characters that have a significant number of layers to peel back, which does happen over the course of the season. My favorite moment for Butcher as a character in episode 1 is probably when he drops Huey off at the electronics store, and Huey tears up the check he has just received from Vought to buy his silence about A-Train killing Robin. You ever seen an Asshole tear up 45k. Robin? Huey. 
You're a good lad. Considering how disillusioned the character Butcher is after everything that's happened with his wife and Homelander that we don't learn about until later in the season, this is a really touching moment. Despite Huey being in an incredibly dark and traumatized point in his life, I find that this exchange reaches a part of Butcher that he himself has been disconnected to ever since his wife disappeared. I don't think Butcher fancies himself to be a superhero, particularly since he holds so much disdain against superheroes in general, but for him to come back and save Huey, I like to think that his motivation for doing so isn't to capitalize on the opportunity to capture a member of the Seven, but to save a good person. He couldn't save his wife, but he can save Huey. As for Homelander, well, we'll be digging into a lot more of his big character moments as I go through each of the remaining episodes of season one. The show bides its time perfectly before showing you how twisted he can get. Hi everyone, it's Lady Genevieve. Thank you so much for watching my video on The Boys, Season 1, Episode 1. If you would like to follow along with the rest of my videos that I will be doing on all of the episodes of Season 1, subscribe to my channel and I will also make a playlist of my videos on The Boys and put that in the pinned comment of this video. So if you are watching this video much later on, when I have finished far more of those videos, then you will be able to go through and watch them all. If you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and Vero, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.